program is right for you. Okay? So, under the J1 program, there are so many programs. You know, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So, there are 14 programs that you can apply for the J1. 14 programs for the J1. One of them is au pair, okay? And then there's a camp counselor. So that's, you come to come to the U.S. and work in, uh, so camps happen a lot during uh, during the summer here in the U.S. So those, those happen a lot. There's a lot of camps that, you know, parents send their kids to during the summer. And so you can come here and be one of the counselors uh, for, you know, for camp. And then there's, you can come here as a college or university student uh, exchange student. You can come here as a government visitor. You can come here as an intern. You can come here as an international visitor. You can come here as a physician. So that's like a doctor. Uh, you can come here as a professor. You can come here as a rich research scholar. You can come here as a secondary school student. You can come here as a short-term scholar. You can come here as a specialist. And then there's uh, STEM initiatives. And then the final one is you can come here for summer work travel. Okay? So those are the 14 programs that are under, uh, under the J-1 visa. So the first step is you need to determine which of those 14 programs works for you. Okay? So look at them, analyze them. And this is the source. This is the source of my information. Okay? Travel.state.gov Travel.state.gov Travel, like traveling somewhere. Travel.state.gov is, is the U.S. website that pretty much uh, gives you everything when you need to travel. It, it gives you all the, all the U.S., all the visas that the U.S. can, can be able to issue. So if you wanna, if you wanna, you know, if you wanna prove what I'm telling you, you can go to that website and it gives you everything that you need to know. Okay. So the first step, you need to choose the right program for you. After you've chosen, maybe let's say, for because today we're doing au pair, you've decided au pair is my program. Okay. So you choose au pair. After you choose au pair, you're supposed to contact a designated sponsor directly so that you can take part in one of their exchange program okay so this designated sponsor is what you would call an agent but there are so this is and this is why i want you to be careful i want to be careful because i don't want you to get scammed okay and we're talking about au pair in the u.s don't get scammed they are only 14 designated sponsors pretty much 14 agencies that are listed. If you go to travel.state.gov and go to the uh, J-1 visa, and then under J-1 visa, click on au pair or educare, it'll take you, it'll take you, it'll take you to, it'll take you to that page that shows you which are the designated sponsors, okay? So it's 14 of them. Uh, I don't need to read all of them, but I can give you some examples. But what I'll do too is I'll post in the video. I'll post the link uh, that has that has all of them, the fourteen of them. Okay, so yeah, it's like twenty twenty care exchange, uh, Apex American Professional Exchange, Agent or Pair Inc, American Cultural Exchange, American Institute for Foreign Study, or Pair for Me Inc. <coughs> Au Pair International Inc., Au Pair Care Inc., Cultural Care Inc., Cultural Homestay International, Euro, A, Euro Au Pair Intercultural Child Care Programs, Expert uh, Group International Inc., Great Au Pair LLC, Inter Exchange Inc. Okay, so those are the 14 designated sponsors and some of them 
some of them you'll notice like if you go if you click well I'll, I'll put the link for that i'll put the link for all of them so if you click on what if you click on some of them you'll notice some of them just only want euro uh, european you know some european countries i think there was one of them that i clicked on that 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 said german or some sort some some european countries but then i uh, like the one that I, I'm going to use for the examples for today is agent or pair. Agent or pair is in, in New Haven, Connecticut is the one that I, 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 I pulled them because I, I'll share some of, some of the information from there. Okay. So the first step, you've chosen the program you want to go to. The second step, you've chosen the designated sponsor. Okay. And I've told you. There's 14 programs, there's 14 designated, uh, 14 designated sponsors. Step three, the sponsors are responsible for selecting the participants as well as supporting and monitoring them during the entire program. So once you reach out to any of the 14, they, they're responsible for you, they're responsible to help you ever to select you, interview you. Once they do, they'll give you all the support that you need and they'll monitor you during the whole program. So those designated sponsors are, it's like you, those are the people who will take care of you once you are in the US, okay? So, and then step four is they, sometimes they do charge, like they, they, the, the sponsor, the designated sponsors, they do charge participation program fees. And we'll go through one of them and I'll tell you about how much they charge, okay? And fees, the fees vary from sponsor to sponsor, okay? So you're, it's, it's, I'm, encouraging, I'm encouraging you that go through the 14, look at their fees, look at how much they're charging, and then you can decide based on, you know, you can decide, you can apply to multiple of them. But obviously, you're going to have to pay program fees. Maybe look at which one is more affordable for you, okay? And we'll, we'll, go, through, we'll go through an example, and I'll, uh, I'll show you about how much, how, much, you know, how much the program fees are. How much the program fees are, okay? All right. So you've, 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 you've gone through, chosen which is the best sponsor for you, and then step five, they interview you, all right? And if you've met the qualifications, and I'll tell you what are the requirements for being an au pair. If you meet all the qualification, you, and you interview well, you've passed the background check, you've passed all those things, you get accepted into the exchange visitor program, okay? So when you get accepted, the sponsor will issue you with a DS. 2019. DS 2019 is like if the same thing as a like as an F. I came to the U.S. as an F1 student. When I applied to this to the university that I was coming to, the when I got accepted, they issued me with an I-20. Now the I-20 is what I used to be able to uh, go for my interview because they'll ask you for that. Same thing for an exchange student. Uh, if, if you're going through the exchange program, you need a DS 2019. And so once you've been interviewed and you've gone through the process and you've been accepted by the designated sponsor, they'll issue you with a DS 2019. Okay? And then step six, you'll pay your service fees. All right? So service is the student and exchange visitor information system it's a it's a fee that even uh, it's a fee that even students uh, pay for so students pay it it's 250 for for students i believe it should be the same thing because uh, it's 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 for f1 f3 m1 m3 and j1 so it's 250 i don't believe it's uh, any different after that you go to the u.s embassy after you've paid the fees, go to the U.S. Embassy and fill out the DS-160. DS-160 is, uh, my mouth is getting dry. 
DS-160 is the form that you fill in uh, before you are able to schedule an interview to go to the U.S. Embassy. Okay? So it's it's an application form. Uh, it's, it's, it's a DS-160. DS-160 is for non-immigrant visas. Okay? So F-1, M-1, uh, uh, J-1 uh, visas. Okay? So fill out the DS-160 and then pay for the pay for the fees the you know the visa the 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 application fee the application fee is $160 which is about 20,000 Kenya shillings okay i'll i'll come there i'll come there i'll come there i know you're asking about the age limits so i'm taking you through the J1 visa process so this is the process you'll go through whether you're an au pair or whatever program you decide to go to and then after after taking you through this process, I'll take you to the au pair now. Okay, so make sure on the day of your interview, you bring your DS twenty nineteen DS one sixty. Remember, DS twenty nineteen is sent by the designated sponsor. DS one sixty you get after you fill, you know, at the uh, online uh, the co so bring the confirmation page, bring a passport. Uh, they say bring a photo, but sometimes when you're filling out the DS-160, sometimes they tell you to attach your photo. So if you didn't attach a photo, bring it, bring it to the to the interview, and then bring the visa application fee receipt, okay? And then uh, all the other all the other documents that you are needed. And then after that, step ten is you know you go through the you go through the whole interview. It's you know, J1 is pretty much the same thing as you're going as an F, F, F1 student or an M1 student for vocational vocational school. So those, that's the process for you to go. If you go, go through that process, that 10-step ten, ten process, and you get your visa, then you come to the U.S. as an au pair, as a camp counselor, as a college student, as a scholar, as a doctor whatever of the 14 program you decided to do okay so now let's switch focus and talk about talk about the au pair program all right so the au pair program what's uh what's the au pair program the au pair program is you know an au pair is 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 a young adult between the age of 18 and 26 who travels to the u.s on a J-1 visa, okay, to provide childcare in exchange for the experience to live with and become part of an American family, okay? So au pairs, they provide their host families with childcare for up to 45 hours a week and help with, you know, child-related household duties, uh, transporting kids to school and activities. That's pretty much what an au pair is. Is what you would, uh, you you know you you would call you would call a, a is it a child caregiver? Yeah. The English word you would use for an au pair is a is a is a caregiver, child caregiver. That's that's really what it is. You, you're coming to the U.S. Uh, and you you know you're taking care of of these kids. But, and they and they get to pay you, but you also there's there's so many other things that we'll discuss that come along with that because you get you know you get you get more benefits. But so going back to an au pair and uh, and talking about what what are the requirements for being an au pair? A, you have to be proficient in spoken English. That's one of the requirements. So you must be proficient in uh, spoken English, you have to have a secondary school, uh, uh, you have to be a secondary school graduate or equivalent, okay? So you finished high school and you're between 18 and 26. So that's the age for whoever was asking for the age requirement to be an au pair. You have to be between 18 and 26 years old. And then you have to be physically capable of participating in the program. Okay, so that means physically uh, uh, you're able to take care. You're able to take care of a child. 
and then they'll interview you personally and uh you know and and based on the interview they'll uh they'll it's 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 the host family so the the it's the the representative of the organization they'll prepare a report of that and then that report is given to the host family and then once the host family decides uh they want you then that's where you move that's where you get accepted into the program okay so the the designated sponsor will do an interview for you and then they provide the they provide the host family with the uh, information that you need so <coughs> there's there's a number of people here that we mentioned okay so we mentioned the designated sponsor but there's also the host family the host family is the family that you're going to be staying with in the US the last uh, thing that you have to do is you have to pass a background investigation okay so that means uh, hopefully you're not you know you don't have a bad record you're not involved in uh, uh, in crime and all that stuff because uh, that that can be one of the things that uh, stops you from you know getting a uh, getting invited into the program so they'll do a background check and then uh, and then yeah based on that and the interview and if the host family likes you you get you know you get accepted into the program you get accepted they send you a DS uh, DS 2019 and then after that you go through the other process all right and so what are the benefits what are the benefits uh, for what are the benefits here oh. <laughs> yeah the age is between the age is between 18 and 26 okay so I mean it's the host family you get to live with the host family for 12 months and then you have an option to extend six or nine or 12 more months. So, which means you can stay, you know, you can stay with one family for two years and then maybe move on to the next one. But also the other benefit that you get is professional training. You receive up to 32 hours of childcare training before you start. So that's good. That qualifies you to be, you know, because there's different levels of the au pair. There's an au pair pro, uh, which is also part of it. And then the other thing too is uh, they, they they provide you with up to ten. Uh, up, so you the the childcare experience is you get to work at least ten hours a day, forty five hours a week. Okay. And then you get school credit. You complete at least six hours of uh, of schooling in in you know in any 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 post secondary facilities or institutions. And then you receive you receive five hundred towards the cost of uh, any any required academic work or coursework, room and board and expense expenses for for uh, for childcare work. So that's that's about the benefits, but let's 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 look at let's let's look at one uh, one particular agency, one particular designated sponsor, and then we'll go through uh, we'll go through them and see see kind of like how much do they pay. So obviously, childcare doesn't uh, if you, if you come here as an au pair, it doesn't pay like really well, but you get the opportunity to live with a family, and so. Your expenses are not that many, which is which kind of balances. So you don't get paid too much, but but you stay. You know you, you you're staying in the house, and they're providing you with everything pretty much, and you don't have very many expenses uh, as you as you live with them. So these uh, with with agent or pair, which is one of the designated sponsor, they have three program options. So they have the au pair program which is up to 45 hours of uh, childcare per week. And then you get a weekly minimum stipend of $195.75. Uh, you complete six credits or 72 classroom hours. And then you get an educational yearly allowance of $500. So 
the hundred and ninety five point uh, seven five dollars weekly minimum, that's that's the minimum you get. So it's it's based on uh, it's based on the host family that you get. So the host family will sometimes pay you more than you know than the minimum one hundred and ninety five. Then they have like au pair pro. Au pair pro is is for more experienced au pairs. So if you're an au pair pro, you work forty five hours. But, you know, uh, 45 hours a week of childcare, and then the stipend is 265 minimum. This is minimum. A lot of times you get paid way more than, you know, than, than the minimum. It's just that they, they put a minimum that way you don't get paid, yeah, less than that. You complete six, you know, six credits or 72 education, uh, 72 classroom hours, and then you get an, an allowance of 500 as a au pair pro <clears throat> so for you to be an au pair pro you have to have a university degree in a child related field and a minimum of 2500 hours of child care experience that's for the pro and then there's a tutor care so the tutor care is uh is for families whose children are all like their full-time school they're from age five and above and they require care before and after school. So while they're in school, you don't take care of them, but you it's you take care of them before school and after school. So for tutor care, you work up to 30 hours of uh of child care per week, and then the weekly minimum is $146.81. And then you complete 12 credits of schooling. The educational year yearly allowance is 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 a is a thousand dollars. So those are the three programs that uh, this the, this this designated sponsor has, and it but it's pretty much it's pretty much that all all they require is pretty much uh, what we what we had gone through is you have to be between eighteen and twenty six. Uh, you have to agree to participate in a twelve month cultural exchange program. So it's, it's one year, you have to have good English skills, a secondary uh, school graduate or equivalent, be in good health, have no criminal record, have a driving license, okay? But it doesn't anywhere here tell you that if you're from Kenya, you don't qualify. So that is, uh, that, I know that's, that's one of the misinformation that is passed around is when people say that because it doesn't say anywhere in here that that you are uh you you're not qualified if you're Kenyan okay so remember i told you in one of the steps for j1 you you have to pay you know you have to pay program fees so really the au pair it's an exchange it's not necessarily for you to make money but even though Sometimes you you know you you if you get hooked up to a good host family, they might pay you better, okay. But for you to apply, uh, you have to pay program fees. So for this uh, for this particular uh, for agent or pair, these are their program fees. This is how much you have to pay. So it says our international uh, partners charge. Uh, they charge fees and their fees are approximately eight hundred dollars to fifteen hundred dollars so that that is uh eight hundred is eighty thousand kenya shillings to a hundred and fifty uh hundred and fifty thousand or if i'm using uh the one twenty something so it's about a hundred thousand to a hundred and seventy thousand depending on depending on you so yeah so there's translation fees there's matching services consultation international flight medical insurance all the yeah and they they say so the service which is 35 dollars actually it's not 250 so the service fee which is 35 dollars and the 160 fees are not included. So yeah, they're saying the total is you pay anywhere between 80,000 to 
170,000 fees. That's for fees. And you can apply online. So you complete your application online and they match you, you get your visa, you arrive, you attend uh, training school and you're good to go. So that's pretty much that that's pretty much all you need to know about uh about a you know a J1 visa for an au pair. Uh and I did know I don't think I left out anything. I talked about you know talked about the money and everything that you need to know and uh yeah that's all you need to know about being an au pair in the US. So yeah, if you're anywhere between, if you qualify for any of those requirements, you know, you're anywhere between uh, 18 and 26 years old, this can be a program for you. But let's go back.